Okay. So I'm going to see if I can freestyle with some ideas for a bit. There's a saying, all that is required for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And it is true, but the problem with this is how do you know that you're a good man? And if you are a good man, then what is the best course of action? These are the concerns that keep me from commenting on geopolitical situations too hastily, which unfortunately for a lot of other people does not seem to be the case. Now, I'm not going to be entirely judgmental about various pundits and things and ascribe all sorts of base intentions to what they're doing, be it uh, money or, you know, party interest. But I would rather say that it's understandable that people wish to use rhetoric to make points which they believe should be made in a timely manner. One of the weaknesses of the hesitation that comes from understanding complexity and the nature of finding truth among a sea of falsehoods of all these entangled interests is that it's very difficult to come forward with something in a timely manner that has strength. And towards the end of mitigating these two things of the need for hasty action and the need for careful consideration, when these two uh, needs combine when they both arise simultaneously and kind of pull at you in opposite directions. The best way to handle this situation is preparation. So towards preparation, you have to work out your ideas and why they are correct. You can't simply go with sympathies and gut feelings and your upbringing. This is where philosophy and the investigation of philosophical systems comes in, as well as keeping an eye on how to ascertain truth, which is done through a combination of the scientific method and philosophy from which it sprang. It also comes from paying careful attention and noticing trends in political situations, in rhetoric, in being aware of how your community runs and how your state runs and then how your nation runs and how your company runs and just always keeping an eye on all of these interacting circles so that you're able to kind of gather a um, an understanding of how human nature plays out the sort of tidy ideas that we have about causality, which when human nature plays out, you know, that cause and effect scenario, it gets really, really messy and difficult to track. So know thyself is, is very important. And even more important is to have a set of principles. For instance, my guiding principles are basically the principles of the Enlightenment and the precedents that were set by the Founding Fathers, among which was, hey, let's try to avoid foreign entanglements. Hey, let's look out for the rights of the individual. Let's not give up liberty for security where it's unnecessary. And to take that notion even further, let's not give up liberty for security even when the security is direly desired. I believe that that's a, a fair assessment of the outlook of the Founding Fathers because in the long term, when you give up liberties uh, for security, you end up being less secure. and. The trend that I've noticed over the, the past few decades is, you know, uh, an eroding of, of civil liberties 
that comes from the merger of state and corporate powers, many of them being these technocratic companies. Uh, there's all sorts of violations of privacy, uh, you know, it, absolutely ridiculous manipulation of political affairs algorithmically uh, in the name of fighting, you know, people that are allegedly, you know, causing the same kind of problems that I just accused these people of, uh, like people like, like Google and Facebook, etc., but basically, at the end of the day, books like Manufacturing Consent and things have their own slant, their own bias, their own worldview, and you have to sort of take that with a grain of salt as well. But with all of these things that I'm kind of meandering through in a, in a, in a very sort of disjointed way, the number one thing that I want to get across is that importance of principle because principle will allow you to understand when things deviate from you know a favorable outcome an outcome that is conducive to human liberty and the pursuit of happiness and so how do you know that your principles are solid well do they align with what we know about human nature uh, do they do they speak to the need for checks and balances? Do do they reflect a desire to seek truth, regardless of personal bias? Um, is there precedent of these things playing out in a certain way? For instance, with all of these foreign wars that we're getting into, have they been successful or have they been quagmires? And you can slant it, but largely it would appear to be the case that these have been quagmires that have distracted us from domestic problems and have weakened us as a nation. And people will cry, isolationist, isolationist. Well... If you believe that making your nation strong and only getting involved in foreign affairs, in foreign intrigues, when the need is legitimately dire and not hyped up, as had been done, for instance, I think uh, in the Middle Eastern conflict where there was a young woman that went on and lied about babies in incubators, that, that, that famous story. Yeah, we, we have, we, 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 we're not being isolationist in that regard. There is such a thing as interaction with the world in a multipolar way. This unipolar, not even nationalistic interest of the United States, not even imperial interest, but purely business interests of a certain class of, of folk who have an entirely different ethic is what I see being played out against the backdrop of the principles that I've stated is the, the thing that principles allow you to see is contrasts, not necessarily black and white, but contrasts. And if you're just sort of floating and meandering with this relativistic outlook that our, you know, culture has fostered because of all of the information available to us, it becomes very difficult to establish solid principles in that, you know, sea of change. Well, what you get is a nation crippled by indecision that then has its fate dictated by the craziest of voices. Hopefully, you folks have found this to be some helpful considerations to take on board. Um, hopefully it wasn't too terribly meandering. I have very limited time to put this kind of stuff together. And again, I'm always kind of handicapped by my need to be thorough in very important issues. But uh, all that being said, thanks so much for listening. My website is The Fractal Journal, where you'll find stories, ideas, and more. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
click the thumbs up button or comment or do do whatever you'd really like. I enjoy interacting pe with people in a number of different ways, whether you agree with me or not. Anyhow, take care.